it's a, a great pleasure for me to be here with you <coughs> for the development of uh, <coughs> mental culture so that we can get rid of uh, all kinds of uh, suffering by means of uh, mindfulness meditation. <coughs> Everybody put possible, every possible effort <coughs> to get rid of the suffering because nobody likes the suffering. Everybody likes to live happy, peaceful, and blissful life. So every possible effort is made to free from all kinds of disease suffering. <clears throat> the mindfulness of meditation or vipassana meditation, which is taught at the bind the Lord Buddha is a one of <clears throat> the many different ways of releasing from all kinds of suffering. So we have to <clears throat> come here to practice this mindfulness meditation or vipassana meditation with a view to realizing our bodily mental phenomena and their true nature, destroying all kinds of our mental defilements, which are the causes of all kinds of suffering. and uh, get rid of all, uh, and attain to the cessation of uh, suffering, Nibbāna. <clears throat> to attain the cessation of uh, suffering, or to be free from all kinds of uh, suffering, we need to destroy all mental suffering such as <clears throat> loba, greed, desire, craving, attachment, dosa, ill will, hatred, anger, and moha, ignorance or delusion. <clears throat> to eradicate all these mental defilements, we need to realize or rightly understanding each and every mental and physical phenomenon. and their true nature. <clears throat> to realize this uh, body-mind process as it really is, we need to practice this mindfulness med meditation or vipassana meditation by being aware of uh, what is happening to our body and mind as it really occurs. <clears throat> that is vipassana meditation or mindfulness meditation. <clears throat> this mindfulness meditation is taught <clears throat> 
in accordance with the discourse of the four foundations of a mindfulness mahasati patana sutra expounded by the omniscient buddha well over 2500 years ago <clears throat> to practice this mindfulness meditation or vipassana meditation <clears throat> first of all we need to purify our morality our moral conduct <clears throat> to purify morality our moral conduct we have to observe the precepts such as five precepts eight precepts nine precepts and so on for laymen for bhikkhus they are 227 rules of a uh, monastic cult or vinaya <clears throat> observing fully observing these precepts <clears throat> we can purify our moral conduct morality <clears throat> to for purification of our moral conduct or deed and speech these precepts are laid down by the omni amnesian buddha <clears throat> as a prerequisite for development of a mindfulness meditation the development of the mindfulness <clears throat> that's the why we have to take up a precept here just now the aim of the take him up a precept is to purify our deed and speech moral con- moral conduct which are indispensable to attain deep concentration of a mind on which the insight knowledge arises based on which the insight knowledge arises <clears throat> penetrating knowledge or experiential knowledge of a mental and physical phenomena <clears throat> is indispensable to exterminate all kinds of uh, mental defilements which are the causes of uh, all kinds of uh, suffering <clears throat> to have the penetrating insight or experiential knowledge of a body mind process we need some degree of a uh, deep concentration to attain some degree of a con- deep concentration constant and continuous mindfulness of uh, what is happening to our body and mind is uh, required <clears throat> to constant constant and continuous <clears throat> to have a continuous and con- constant mindfulness 
our mind should be balanced and also become stable. To have a balanced and stable mind, we should have a purification of a morality or deed and speech. To purify our deed and speech, we need to observe the rules of the precepts laid down by the Lord Buddha. That's what why we have to take up a precept. <clears throat> abstention from killing, abstention from taking what is not given, abstention from celibacy, abstention from telling lies, abstention from using any kind of intoxicant, abstention from taking substantial food after midday and so on. you have uh, the translation of uh, these precepts uh, <clears throat> with you. So, fully observing these uh, eight precepts, our deed and speech will be purified. Based on purification of our deed and speech, we are able to concentrate our mind on any object of meditation <clears throat> to a large extent. Purification of a deed and speech is called a sila visuddhi. Purification of a virtue or morality With the purification of our morality, we do not have a clear conscience. <clears throat> when we practice our mindfulness and meditation, sometimes we may feel guilty conscious. by reflecting the evil deed and speech we did in, in this life or in the past existence. <clears throat> <clears throat> then we feel guilty conscious. Then our mind cannot be balanced and stable and clear, then we, can't, we are not able to concentrate our mind on the object of meditation very well. So to have a clear conscience and clarity of mind, <clears throat> tranquility of mind, we have to observe a precept as a base for our meditation, vipassana meditation. <clears throat> so based on purified conduct, a morality or virtue, we concentrate our mind on any mental process or physical process as it really occurs. Because of a clear conscience, the mind becomes stable, balanced, and clear 
then it it's able to concentrate on its meditated objects very well <clears throat> then we attain deep concentration of a mind when the mind is deeply concentrated on any mental or physical process the insight of penetrating knowledge a spiritual knowledge that arises together with concentration becomes sharp or penetrating then the insight realizes the true nature of a bodily and mental phenomena and the bodily phenomena as they really are <clears throat> so we have to observe these precepts as you know in buddhism to free oneself from all kinds of uh, suffering and to attain the cessation of a suffering <clears throat> through realization of a bodily mental process we have a three kinds of a training the first one is sila seka training and sila virtue or moral conduct The second one is samadhi sikha training and concentration The third is panya sikha training in insight or wisdom or enlightenment Out of these three trainings the first training is a to <clears throat> observe these precepts precepts so that we can purify our morality our conduct based on purified morality or conduct we contemplate our mind uh, contemplate on any mental or physical phenomena <clears throat> as it really is that is uh, vipassana meditation i think here we need to explain uh, very briefly the difference between samatha meditation and vipassana meditation samatha here means calm tranquility the the commentary to pali text <clears throat> gives a def- definition of the samatha samatha means a mental state that calm defilements or hindrances <clears throat> when the mind is not concentrated on any object of meditation it's not it's unable to calm any of a hindrance or mental defilement it's only when the mind is well concentrated on the object of meditation that it can calm 
all kinds of hindrance and def- defilement, uh, mental defilements. <clears throat> So here actually samatha means a concentration. So it's a, it can be called calmness, a tranquility and serenity. <clears throat> then according to the the definition of the word samatha. The aim of a samatha meditation is to attain higher degree of a concentration of a mind only. Not for realization of a bodily mental phenomena. So samatha meditate cannot realize any mental or physical phenomena. Even though he has attained the highest degree of a concentration such as a jhana and also a vanya, supernormal power. <clears throat> so samatha meditations aims at attainment of a deep concentration only. Samatha meditator cannot realize a bodily and mental phenomena in their true nature, so he is not able to destroy the defilements, mental defilements which are the causes of suffering. <clears throat> vipassana means the insight, the insight which penetrates into the true nature of our bodily and mental phenomena, especially three characteristics of existence, that's unnature and permanence, Dukkha, suffering, another impersonal nature. <clears throat> but with a, some degree of a concentration, Vipassana meditator is not able to realize it. This is bodily mental phenomena and their true nature. The Vipassana meditator to need some degree of a concentration, which can be obtained by him by being aware of uh, what is happening to our body and mind as it really occurs. <clears throat> then the aim of a Vipassana meditation is to attain the cessation of a suffering through realization of a bodily mental phenomena <clears throat> based on some degree of a deep concentration. That is a the difference between samatha meditation and vipassana meditation. There's also another point of a difference between the two types of meditation. <clears throat> the purpose of a samatha meditation is to concentrate the mind on a single object of meditation. So samatha meditator takes a single object as the subject of meditation. He focuses the mind on a single object of meditation. Suppose he takes respiration and breathing, out breathing as the object of meditation. He contemplates 
on everything and everything. When the mind goes out, he has to bring it back to the primary object that's uh, in breathing, all breathing, respiration at the nose tree. Focus the mind there, <clears throat> then be mindful of it, make him mentally know in, out, in, out. Whenever the mind goes out, he has to bring it back to the primary object and focus it on the nose tree and to make him mental note and out and out and so on. Vipassana meditator needs to realize each and every mental process or physical process as it really occurs. So it has many different objects of a meditation. Any mental states can be the object of vipassana meditation. Any emotional states can be of the object of meditation. Any physical process of physical activities, actions or movements can be the object of meditation. Because a personal meditator needs to rightly understand each and every mental and physical process in their true nature. So he hasn't a single object <clears throat> of a meditation, he has many varieties of a different mental and physical process as his object of meditation, the object of meditation. <clears throat> Accordingly, while engaged in a vipassana meditation, His mind goes out, thinks about something else. Vipassana meditator must not bring the mind back to the primary object. He must follow the mind which is going out or wandering or thinking about something else. He needs to realize what is happening at the moment as it really occurs. So when the thought arises, he must observe it as it is. When the sadness, sadness arises, he must observe it as it is. When happy, happiness arises, he must observe it as it is. When imagination arises, he must observe it as it arises. When any of a physical unpleasant sensation, unpleasant physical sensation such as a pain, itching, stiffening, numbness and so on, Rises, he must observe it as it really is. <clears throat> Any mental state, emotional state, physical process is the object of meditation because <clears throat> it needs to be realized by a vipassana meditator. <clears throat> <clears throat> So here, the difference between samatha meditation and vipassana meditation is that 
Samatha meditator takes only a single object of meditation. Vipassana meditator takes many different physical process and mental process the object of meditation. But he takes only an object at a moment. At the same time he can take two or three mental or physical process as the object of meditation. <clears throat> So what do we he had to be careful as Vipassana meditator is <clears throat> he must not bring his mind back to the primary object when the mind goes out and wanders or thinks about something else. He must have followed the mind which is wandering or thinking about something else. And observe it, be mindful of it <clears throat> as it really occurs. Making mental note, thinking, 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 wondering, 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 and so on. <clears throat> Until that thought has disappeared, he must observe it. Only after the thought has disappeared, she should return to the primary object. So this, this is a difference between samatha and Vipassana meditation. It's a very much important to be understood. <coughs> In the following nights, uh, we will deal with uh, both theoretically and practical aspects of Vipassana meditation. Today is the first day, so day we have to lay stress on practical aspect of uh, this meditation. <clears throat> so that you can easily practice this meditation. But you have <clears throat> some experienced in Vipassana meditation. Some of the meditator has a lot of experience in Vipassana meditation. <clears throat> but there may be some meditator who hasn't any experience in Vipassana meditation, so we have to <clears throat> deal with the, the technique <clears throat> of this inside meditation as to exercise on practical, practical exercise <clears throat> on Vipassana meditation. <clears throat> Before you begin to practice Vipassana meditation, first of all, you have to <clears throat> reflect some attributes of the Lord Buddha which uh, who teaches us this way of uh, liberation. So the Buddha has innumerable attributes, but on any attribute if we reflect say, enough, the nine <coughs> attributes of the Buddha is known to or meditator, I think. <clears throat> the first one is uh, Raham. Raham means uh, the Lord Buddha or the omniscient Buddha 
who is worthy of honor and homage because he has totally destroyed all mental defilements and attained the cessation of suffering. This is what the, the word Araham, the attributes Araham means. The Buddha who is worthy of honor or homage because he has attained enlightenment through realization of, uh, uh, through destroying all mental defilement and the hindrances. In this way, you should reflect upon the attributes of the Buddha about two minutes. By reflecting the attributes of a Buddha, you will be inspired to practice this mindfulness meditation taught by himself. <clears throat> Then, <clears throat> after that, you should develop a loving kindness towards all living beings. Mitta. Reflecting the welfare of all living beings, wishing their peace and happiness and prosperity. You develop your loving kindness, spirit of loving kindness towards all sentient beings. Saying like this, may all beings be happy and peaceful. May all living beings free from all kinds of suffering. May all living beings get rid of our suffering, and so on. In this way, you should develop your loving kindness towards all living beings. <clears throat> this is a call to Mitta Bhavana, as you know. Then your mind becomes clear, tranquil, searing by developing loving kindness towards all living beings. <coughs> <coughs> then you should reflect the repulsive nature of a loathsome, loathsomeness of your body by reflecting upon impurities of the body such as <clears throat> intestine, blood, phlegm, and so on. When you reflect upon the impurities of the body, you become less attached to your body. Attachment is the suffering, and the cause of a suffering, as you know. Less attachment <coughs> makes a suffering less. So, when you reflect upon the impurities of the body, you have <coughs> your attachment becomes less and less to the body. Then you become honest 
and develop and your mindfulness and meditation. Then the third, the fourth one. <clears throat> you should reflect upon the death. Ever approaching death, we can die at this moment. We can die tonight. We can die tomorrow. We can die <coughs> day, after, day after tomorrow. So at every second, the death is approaching us. We have to reflect upon it. Death is a sudden. Life is uncertain. By reflecting upon <clears throat> the nature of the death, then we have the. We are very much willing to to put enough effort in our practice. <clears throat> These are, we call it, uh, the four protections. Reflection upon the virtues of the Buddha. Developing loving kindness towards all living beings. Reflection upon impurities of the body and reflection upon the nature of the death. See, you, you do these four protections about two or three minutes. After that, you begin to practice your meditation. <clears throat> By contemplating on the abdominal movement, you should start <clears throat> your meditation. Then sit, uh, not cross-legged position. If you crossed one leg upon the other, against the other, then the circulation becomes uh, irregular unstable, and a short time you feel numb or painful sensation. So the two legs should be evenly placed side by side. The left one outside and the inside, uh, the right legs inside. Or uh, the right leg outside, the left one's inside. As you feel comfortable, you should place these two legs side by side, not crossing <coughs> one upon the other. Then body should be kept straight. Do not bend forward or do not bend backward. Higher to neck must be straight. <clears throat> then the hand should be placed in the ankle, the one after another, like this position. The left one, the left hand, <clears throat> the right one placed upon the left one, the palm upward. Should not, you should not touch the four inch, uh, the two inch, the thumbs like this. If the two thumbs touches, then the, the pearls at the tip of the thumbs becomes so distant that you cannot you cannot note any other objects. 
So the two term must not be touched. Then you should place pen in this way. <clears throat> and also you can put in this way too. The two hands must be put on each knee, this way. The palm upward, not this one. If you do put this way, the heat on the palm is too tense. Gradually it becomes severe and severe. Then here, <coughs> the feeling of a hot sensation. <coughs> Is a uh, becomes unbearable later on, so you should put in this way. <clears throat> then focus the mind on the abdominal movement, the clothing at the waist should be loosing. You should not tighten the clothes very tight. Loosen so that the abdominal movement, the abdomen moves very freely. <clears throat> then focus the mind on the abdominal movement and observe the movement of the abdomen. Outward movement of the abdomen and inward movement of the abdomen. The movement depends on the physical position of uh, the meditator, sometimes uh, the movements uh, rises uh, outward and there falls uh, inward. For some meditator the movement rises upward and falls downward. Whatever it may be, what you need it just to know or just to be mindful about what is happening at that moment as it really occurs, that's all. When you feel <clears throat> upward movement, you observe it rising. When you feel downward movement, you observe it rising. When you feel outward movement, you feel you note rising, you can do it. Labeling or uh, making mental note is needed in the beginning of the practice so that <clears throat> the mind can be concentrated well on the object of meditation. The labeling or noting helps the mind to focus on its object very well. <clears throat> so you note rising, falling, rising, falling. When the rising movement and falling movements are not distinct to your mind, then you can put both hands on the movement. Then when the, move, the abdomen rises, the hands moves outward or upward. When the abdomen falls, the hand <coughs> falls inward. In this way you can note rising and falling. Do not take deep, deep breaths deep breath or vigorous breath so that you can make it distinct. Because <clears throat> the breathing should be normal and natural. When you take it quick or vigorous, then you get tired in a short time. So breathing should be normal and natural. Focus the mind on it and knows it as much as possible. Make him mental know as rising, falling, rising, falling. <clears throat> when your mind becomes concentrated to a certain extent, you will be able to feel the rise and fall of the movement very distinctly. Then you can note it very well, rising, falling, rising, falling. While you are engaged in the movement of the abdomen, your mind goes out. You must not cling to <clears throat> 
the abdominal movement. You leave it alone and follow the mind which is wandering and observe it, wandering, 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 until it has disappeared. After it has disappeared, you return to the primary object that is the rise and fall of the abdomen. When you feel any painful sensation or numb, numbness on any part of your body, you should focus on that sensation and note it as it is, making mental no pain, 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 or numb, 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 and so on. After the sensation, the physical painful sensation becomes a subsided or disappeared. You return to the primary object, rise and fall over the abdomen, note as usual. Rising movement and falling movement of the abdomen is a wire that do win element, one of the four primary material elements, which is a very predominant to be realized by a meditator. Wire that do win elements <clears throat> has the characteristic of a movement, some motion, vibrating, supporting. Movement, motion, vibrating, suffering is the specific characteristic of a wind element, wire tattoo. You have to realize it very thoroughly. That's why we have to start with it. But what you should be careful is not to take it as a single object of a meditation. The abdominal movements are not a single object of meditation, but one of many different mental and physical processes which are the object of meditation. <clears throat> that is why the mind goes out, you leave it alone and follow the mind and observe it as it is. When you deal with the thought, ideas, opinions, mental images, imagination, you are not a mind should be energetic and somewhat quick so that the note mind becomes gradually more and more powerful than the thinking process. When the note mind becomes more powerful, the thinking process <clears throat> becomes weak. Then in a short time the thought stops because it's overwhelmed by the note mind, the powerful note mind. That's why you need to note attentively, energetically, and somewhat quickly. After the thought has stopped, you return to the primary object of the rise and fall of the abdomen and note as usual. While you are sitting, when you hear some sharp or loud sound, you should note hearing, 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 hearing. Then come to the primary object, note as usual, rising, falling. <clears throat> Whatever arises in your mind, emotional states of uh, mental states, you should note it as it is. Then return to the primary object, note as usual. This is for sitting. In a sitting, you should try not to change any position, not to change the position of the sitting even once. But if you are not able to sit even 30 minutes, half an hour without changing position, but we, you may change once in a sitting. Say, after 15 minutes of meditation, you feel unbearable, painful sensation. You note the pain, 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 pain by being patient with it. But the painful becomes unbearable, then you tend to de change the position. Then you note and ending and ending to change. Then change the position and note every action, actions and movements of the body. <clears throat> After you have changed, you continue to 
sit and observe the abdominal movement and any other object which is more distinct. When the two objects are rising, then you should note one object which is more distant than the other. Then, <clears throat> this is for sitting, but you should not the <clears throat> You should keep your body still. Do not move your hands or any limbs or body. Try to keep it very still and quiet so that you can attain deep concentration of a mind. But in the walking meditation, you should do walking and sitting alternately. <clears throat> In the walking meditation, first of all, you stand still and look at about two meters ahead of your head of uh, yes, two meters before you. You must not close your eye, but your eye should be half closed, looking at a place about four meters ahead of you, but not sorry, two meters ahead of you. Do not look at nearer than, if you do, you'll feel tense on the back, on the neck, sometimes you may feel dizzy, <clears throat> you may feel headache. So you should look at about a place above two meters ahead of you, and then make left, note left, right, left, right. When you make left steps, observe it and make mental note left. When you make do right steps, you observe it and make a mental note right, left, right. <clears throat> About 20 minutes. After that you note lifting, moving, lifting, putting, lifting, putting, or lifting, dropping, lifting, dropping. Two parts of a step must be noted, about ten minutes. After that you should note lifting, pushing, dropping. Three parts of a step must be noted, slowly lifting, pushing, dropping, lifting, pushing, dropping. <clears throat> In this way, you should walk at least an hour, if it is possible. <clears throat> While walking, if you, your mind goes out, note the mind, and then come back to the walking meditation and note the foot, the stepping. <clears throat> your stepping must not be loud, stepping should be short, stepping should be your step should be a length of a, a foot so that you can very well observe it each step each part of a step you must not look around here and there then <clears throat> in this way you should walk back and forth but do not make any noise uh, put in down the foot very strongly. Uh, you have to put down very, very slowly. You have to lift very, very slowly so that you can be aware of uh, each movement of the foot very well. <clears throat> this is a walking meditation. Yes, now time up. I think you can walk in, sit, practice meditation. May you all, may all of you <clears throat> practice your meditation strenuously and attain the, the cessation of a suffering. Sadhu. We will continue tomorrow this exercise, practical exercise, practical aspect of a meditation. 
So I want to request you not to make any noise when you 